There are a lot of different variants of T lymphocytes, but we are going to focus in on the three major categories of T lymphocytes. The first category is called killer T cells. And the killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells do exactly what their name says. Um, they have surface molecules, they're called CD8, and those CD8 molecules can recognize foreign antigens. So if this cell um, happens to bind to a foreign cell, like a bacterium, um, then it is going to initiate destruction of that cell. Primarily, this happens in response to binding to a pathogen, some type of a pathogen, either a bacterium or a virus, but, or a viral infected cell. But this can also be due to our own cells becoming cancerous. Um, the cytotoxic T cells, in a lot of cases, recognize that and destroy the cancerous cells. So that's a very important role that they have. These are also um, the cells, cytotoxic T cells, are the ones that sometimes overreact to transplanted tissues, um, so transplants from one person into another, sometimes that leads to immunorejection, and that's due to the activity of the cytotoxic T cells. So again, we said T, T cells, T lymphocytes, have to be close to their target in order to do their job. They can't act at a distance. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. One of the ways that they could destroy a target cell is by secreting molecules called perforins. These actually create pores in the target cell. So it has to be in close proximity, right? Otherwise, if the T lymphocyte releases its, releases its perforins, it might perforate the wrong cell. Um, so it has to be close in order to be able to target this response. And then the other thing that they can do, other than making pores in things, the other thing they can do is secrete substances that induce apoptosis um, in the target cell, so apoptosis programmed cell death. This is a very neat and tidy way to have um, to get rid of cells because the cells, rather than just kind of bursting open and spewing their contents, instead of that, they sort of self-destruct from the inside and it, uh, everything is kept contained inside of the plasma membrane and then a macrophage eventually would come and gobble up the leftovers. Okay, second type of T cell is helper T cell. So this sounds like the complete opposite. A helper T lymphocyte, what do these do? They have a different type of molecule on their surface, CD4 is its name. And what these cells do primarily is produce interleukins. These are just cytokines produced by um, lymphocytes. They have a special name, interleukins or lymphokines. It's just a cytokine being sent from one immune cell to another. And uh, what those messenger molecules do is stimulate the B cells and the cytotoxic T cells, and they kind of help to ramp up their activities. So those are hel helper T lymphocytes. Regulatory T lymphocytes, these used to always be called suppressor Ts, suppressor T lymphocytes, that's kind of the older name for them. You'll see it, see them called either, either one, depending on what source you read. Um, these lymphocytes, regulatory T lymphocytes, they have a different set of surface molecules. Okay, so these are all T cells, all three of these categories are T cells, but their surfaces are different and that allows them to do different jobs. Regulatory T lymphocytes have an important job in inhibiting immune responses. So they inhibit B lymphocytes and killer Ts. That helps them to not overreact. We don't want these cells to be overreactive and, for example, targeting our own cells. That would be very bad. So regulatory T lymphocytes help to sort of calm things down. There is some indication that um, having deficiencies in regulatory T molecules, this, uh, T lymphocytes, this can actually lead to development of allergies and autoimmune conditions. So it's thought, again, that these are important for helping to keep all the other players regulated, not overreacting. So we've mentioned all of these T lymphocytes. They all have special surface molecules. Those surface molecules are what allow binding and recognition to happen which ultimately is what activates these cells. Um, however, T cells are not able to bind to pathogens directly. They just, they don't have that capability, unlike the B cells. So instead, what happens is they have to receive the message from another cell. 
And um, specifically, the cells that communicate with T cells are called antigen presenting cells because that's exactly what they do. There are a number of different types of antigen presenting cells. Macrophages can be antigen presenting cells. Remember macrophages, we said are phagocytic. They go and they eat other or engulf um, some of these foreign particles and digest them. And then what they'll do in some cases is take little pieces from what they've just digested and display it on their surface, display it on the surface of the plasma membrane. And then um, they can show that fragment to a T cell and that will activate the T cell. So how does this happen? Well, macrophages can do this. Also dendritic cells are another cell type that can do this. Dendritic cells are really specialized for doing this. Dendritic cells come from the bone marrow um, and they migrate out into most of the tissues in the body, especially they're in the tissues that tend to be exposed to pathogens. So things near the surface, like in the skin, um, a lot of dendritic cells in, in those sorts of tissues. So dendritic cells, their whole job essentially is to engulf antigens um, and then to partially digest them and to show them on their surface. And that allows the T cells to realize, oh, there's a pathogen present, need to get activated. The way that these sorts of cells do this, the way that antigen presenting cells um, show their, their uh, fragments to, to T cells is through the action of histocompatibility proteins. And what these are, are proteins, sets of proteins that are present on all of our cells, um, except red blood cells. They are responsible for um, sort of collecting samples of proteins from inside of a cell. Um, so what, talking about one of our cells. Okay, so proteins get sampled and then the MHCs, the major histocompatibility complex, this set of proteins um, grabs onto that sample and puts it on the, on the surface and it acts like a flag that the immune system can recognize. So um, there are different classes, a couple of different classes. Class 1 MHCs are made by all cells except red blood cells. Class 2 are made specifically by these antigen presenting cells. So these are the specialized ones, things like macrophages and dendritic cells. Class 2 MHCs. If a class 2 MHC is present on the cell surface, and if it is also displaying foreign antigens, that is what can activate a helper T cell. The helper T cell then um, is going to send a signal, right, an interleukin uh, or a cytokine, and that signal will get sent to help activate cytotoxic T cells, other sorts of immune cells as well. So um, let's, let's take a look at the picture here. Okay, what we have is an antigen presenting cell, probably a dendritic cell or a macrophage, and it's got on its surface this MHC molecule. This is a class two MHC, and it is displaying a foreign antigen. Okay, so this came from something that this cell digested. It, it ate up some pathogenic um, cell, like a bacteria, and now it's showing a piece of it on the surface. The helper T cell does two things. It binds to that foreign antigen, and it also has this arm that reaches down and checks out the MHC class two molecule. What this is doing is allowing the helper T cell to realize this is one of our own cells. Okay? It is not foreign, but what it's showing me, this is a foreign substance. And it's the combination of those two signals to the helper T cell that causes it to start sending out its interleukins. Same thing over here with the cytotoxic T cell. So it's binding to a class one MHC. And this, in this case, um, the target cell, this would be one of our own cells, but it's one that perhaps is infected. Okay, so it's displaying, uh, again, that's a foreign antigen right there. Cytotoxic T cell checks on the foreign antigen and also checks to make sure that this is one of our own cells. And then it makes the decision, okay, you're infected. You need to be dealt with. So those are MHCs, major histocompatibility complexes. They allow the T cells to recognize what the antigen presenting cells are showing them. Once a T cell is activated, it has two very important jobs. So right here, here's a helper T cell. It's just been activated by that binding. And what it's going to do next is travel over here and make a connection with a B cell. This B cell is specific 
to that same antigen. Okay, so that binding is able to happen. Helper T cell um, tells the B cell to become activated. The B cell, cell will start proliferating. Some of them will become memory cells, others will become plasma cells, and these are gonna start producing a whole bunch of antibodies that are specific to this particular antigen, okay, which came from a virus in this case. The other thing that happens, okay, so activated helper T cell, the other thing that it does is produces interleukins that stimulate proliferation of cytotoxic T cells, such as this one right here. So these uh, make copies of themselves, and then what those will do is go and destroy infected cells. So again, they're recognizing this cytotoxic T cell, it's recognizing you're infected based on the fact that that MHC is displaying a foreign antigen. So at that point, um, this cytotoxic T cell is going to initiate destruction of this infected cell and it will degrade away um, and then that infection is no longer going to be a problem. So these helper T cells, these ones that uh, are, are recognizing the infection and initiating these events, these are actually the cells that HIV, um, human immunodeficiency virus, this is what HIV infects, it's the helper T cells. So if the virus is infecting this cell, that's a problem. It's kind of like it's hidden inside one of the immune cells and there's no way um, for the body to, to clear that infection. So in that case, over time, the T cells actually die um, and then that leaves the host susceptible to other sorts of infections because, right, if the helper T cells are gone, then there's no way to, to really ramp up the activity of B cells and cytotoxic T cells. So that's why um, HIV is such a serious infection to have. But we do have antivirals at this point, antivirals that help to keep the infection sort of um, from ramping up, but there's no way at this point anyway, there's no way to actually clear the infection altogether.